We're going to talk about foundations of the family, and uh, we're just going to look at some principles, biblical principles, amen? Principles for the home, principles for the family. This will be the first lesson. We'll see how far we can get in this lesson. And uh, what is so important tonight is that we need to focus on what the Bible says. The Bible has stood the test of time. And what you're going to see and what you have seen, if you're saved, you know the Lord is your Savior, you've seen how the world changes. The world has changed so much just in the last 40 years. I've seen so many changes since I've been saved. Amen. It's been about 40, 47 years. How about that? Amen. And you know what? I want you to know something here. Regardless of which way our society goes, the Bible is still true, and the Bible is the answer. So we need to readjust our thinking and our ways to the Word of God. Amen? We don't, we don't ignore the truth. We follow the truth. That's what we need to do tonight. So some of the things I'm going to say tonight and in upcoming weeks, in the month of May, in the month of June, again, Mother's Day this month, Father's Day next month, I want to encourage you tonight to re-examine your marriage, your home, your family. If you got children uh, in your home, how you're raising those children, amen? Are you following the precepts of the Bible? I want you to do that. And I don't want you to look, and how can I say it, and look at, especially husband and wife, well, I don't need these messages, but my husband needs them, or vice versa. The husband's looking at the wife and saying, well, I know I don't need those. You know, she really needs these messages. No, let's not go down that road. Let's make sure we look at ourselves. We allow the Word of God. The Bible says in James chapter 1, it's the perfect law of liberty. Amen? And that perfect law of liberty is like a mirror. And God says, let's examine our own hearts. Amen? Now, before we get into the 1 Corinthians chapter 3 passage, and again, you know what? I got liberty tonight. I really do. Um, and I just, you know what? I just thank God for the Bible. This is the standard. This is what I go by. Do I follow everything perfectly? No, I, I fall. When I fall, I ask God to forgive me. Amen? And I want to get it right. Go to Psalm 139, and we will go to the, the other passage in 1 Corinthians 3 in a little bit. Um, and Psalm 139, and I want you to do this, to, I want you to do it tonight, I want you to do this every time, as a matter of fact, there's a song here, and uh, let's see here, <clears throat> let's see if I can find in this song, but we've got a few song books kicking around here, uh, let's see, it's not in that one, I don't think, uh, let's see, I think it's in this one. Just bear with me. You're in Psalm 139. Just hang on for a minute here. Amen? <clears throat> Psalm 139. Let's see here. And uh, that's it. That's the song I want. That's the one. I'm just trying. You know what? You kind of think about stuff in 471. I want you to just think of this song here. Um, 471. 471. In this song book. Watch this here. Amen. And listen, this, this, is, this, is, this was written by J. Edwin Orr. He was a famous evangelist. Amen. He wrote the, this song. Um, I was thinking about my, grand, my, great, my great grandmother who lived practically to 100. She died in Los Angeles, California. My brother and I were communicating the other day, and he was going through some of that genealogy stuff, and he was, we were just trying to pick each other's brains about our family and so forth. And I remember as a little kid, I was probably in grade uh, three or grade two, and I remember her. And, uh, you know, I don't know if she was a Christian or not. I pray and hope she was. But anyway, the tune that she played was, ba the tune was this Maori melody. That's what she played. That's the melody for the song. But the words are like this. <clears throat> Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O oh Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be some wicked way in me. Cleanse me 
from every sin and set me free. I praise Thee, Lord, for cleansing me from sin. Fulfill Thy word and make me pure within. Fill me with fire where once I burned with shame. Grant my desire to magnify thy name. Lord, take my life and make it wholly thine. Fill my poor heart with thy great love divine. Take all my will, my passion, self, and pride. I now surrender, Lord, in me abide. Before I sing the last verse, very important principle. J. Edwin Moore preached revival. I believe if I have the story right on this song here, he's, it was in a revival meaning he wrote the words down, and that revival meaning I think it was in South Africa, and those words came, and then he sang, this tune was sung. Think about it. You want revival tonight? Hey, we need revival in the church. We need revival in your marriage. We need revival in the home. We need it with the kids. Amen. We need it tonight. We really need it tonight. Amen. It doesn't matter what the conditions of the world are like. We can still have revival in our homes, in our families, in our own personal lives. But where does it begin tonight? It begins. You shouldn't look at anybody and say, well, they really need revival. How about you? You need revival. Here's the last verse. <clears throat> Oh, Holy Ghost, revival comes from Thee. Send a revival, start the work in me. Thy word declares, Thou wilt supply our need. For blessing now, O oh Lord, I humbly plead. You know what? That's a prayer God will answer. You say, hey, I want God to answer some prayers in my life. What, what, what prayers? And we're not saying what you're praying is wrong. Don't misunderstand what I just said. But maybe what you really need most of all right now in your life is revival. Amen. I think we can all use some revival in our lives and our hearts. Amen? Amen. Amen. So anyway, you say, well, well, you're saying that song. Yeah. Look at Psalm 139, verse 23. This is the inspiration that J. Edwin Noor got for that song. Amen? Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me. Know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Let me pray, and I'll say a few things about that, and then we'll get into the home and family principles, okay? Father, again, thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for the truth. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you that you've given us, Lord God, the wor your words, Lord God. Now help us, Lord God, not just, uh, just have a copy of your words, but to, and, but to believe them. And even more important, not only believe them, Lord God, but to practice them. Help us to put these principles into practice. God, this world is is, is suffering from not seeing godly homes and godly marriages, Lord. God, the only hope is in your people tonight to follow biblical principles. So, Lord God, just do a great work throughout these weeks, upcoming weeks, Lord God, as we focus on these matters. God, give me wisdom and direction, which way to go and which way not to go in these series of messages, Lord and God, again, just touch hearts and lives. So, Lord, we look to you tonight. May your will be accomplished in every life, in every home, every family, in every marriage, Lord God. And God, we'll just give you all the honor and glory, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so he says, search me, O God. Amen. 
Here is again a Psalm of David. Search me. You ever, you ever ask God for that? Tonight you need to search. Amen. Search your heart. Search your heart. Search me. You're saying, God, op I'm open to you, Lord. God, I want you to take that microscope out. God, you know me better than anybody else. And God, search me. Search me, Lord. God, search me. Amen. You know, you got to open yourself up to have this take place in your life. Amen. Search me and know my heart. Now, God already knows your heart. But the problem is, do we know our hearts? Amen. The Bible says in Jeremiah 79, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? God says, you can't even know your own heart. We don't realize how far our heart can take us. Amen. If your heart's in tune with the Lord, it'll take you closer to God. If your heart's not in tune with the Lord, it'll bring you further away from God. Amen. So he says, search me. Amen. I like this. He says, to try me and know my thoughts. Isn't that a scary thing? You know, you read in the New Testament, here's Jesus, you know, in the Gospels, he says, the Bible says, he knew their thoughts. <laughs> That's God. I would say, I'm sorry, I don't want to know the people's thoughts. Amen. I don't want to know your thoughts tonight. But let me ask you this. You know your thoughts. You know your life. You know what you've been thinking about. Have you been being careful about what you're watching and listening to? whether it be through electronic devices, cell phones, television screens, internet, cable TV, whatever it is. Have you been careful? Amen? Or have you been kind of sneaking some things here and there to watch? Amen? That are not pleasing to God, not edifying. Amen? Won't build you up, but tear you down. You know what? Hey, listen, you know, whatever you watch, it's going to affect your thought life, what you see, what you listen to. Amen? And not only that, I've said this so many times in Acts 4.20, I think it is, you will also talk about it. <laughs> now, there's some things you probably won't talk about <laughs> if it's not appropriate, amen? But I want you to know something tonight. Do you, are you open for God to do this to you? Are you open for God to really scrutinize your life? God, give me a spiritual examination, God. Check me over, God. God, if there's any error in my life, God, every room, there's no hidden compartments in my life. Every room is open to you in my life. Amen. I'm yours. Amen. We just sang that as you're all on the altar. Did, you know what? Did you sing that at home? Did you sing that at home? I hope you meant what you sang. You know, it's unfortunate, but we can sing a lie. Did you know that? That we don't mean what we're singing. Is you're all on the altar. Amen. That's what God wants. Ed, you're all, not some of you, not 90%. How about 100? Give God 100. Amen. He deserves it. He gave his all. He gave his best for you and me on the cross. Isn't he worthy? He's worthy. He's worthy. Amen. He's deserving tonight. He's worthy tonight. Amen. What is the, what is the most worthy cause that you can support tonight? You know what it is? Serve God. Live for God. That's what you need to do tonight. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Try me. Know my thoughts. And he says this, Oh, David, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Amen. Wickedness as defined by the Bible, which has not changed. Amen. It has not changed. The world changes. Wickedness. According to the world, what was wicked by the world, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and keep on going back, was okay, or it was wrong. Wickedness was more, more in tune with the biblical definition. We're living in a day and age where, where wickedness, what is wickedness? As we'll see in this lesson here on the, these basic principles, amen? He says, and lead me in the way everlasting, Amen. Oh, boy, praise God. Know my heart. Know my thoughts. Search me. Try me. Amen. Convict me. How about that? Convict me. That's what you ought to pray to. Convict me, God. Hey, listen, if, the, listen, if, you, if you're not right with God, you're not living for Christ tonight, you're saved, listen, and you're convicted about it, praise God. That's great. That's the Lord trying to speak to your heart, that you need to take care of some business with God. Amen. That's what you need to do. Listen, this is, you say, well, that's a wonderful message tonight, preacher, or this morning, or last uh, Wednesday night, or whatever. I, I'm pray, pray to God, I hope it helps you, amen? More important, let's, let's, let's allow it to affect our lives in such a way that the people in this world will see a transformation take place, which is what's supposed to be happening anyway since you got saved. A transformation, not being conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, proving what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's that Romans 12, 1 and 2 passage, which I've already mentioned some of it. Amen? Amen. So anyway, I don't know. The Lord just touched my heart about that and that song. It's not in the notes, but anyway, it's free, okay? 1 Corinthians 3. 
Amen. First Corinthians 3. Now let's get to the, the message. Amen. You know, I got liberty. I can go off here a little bit, here and there, but let me give you some principles. You know what? Thank God this morning. You know, I was thinking about that message I preached this morning. You know, we got a foundation. You're saved. Amen. If you got, if you got saved, and again, I used the boat illustration. Amen. Hey, he'll get you to the other side. Praise God. And he did. He got him to the other side. Amen. Listen, I don't know how, what you're, how you're dealing with all of these things in the world, but I'll tell you something. In Christ, you can get through it. In Jesus Christ, amen, you can do it. This is not a power of positive thinking message. This is, that's just what the Bible says. You can do it, amen, you can do it. In Christ, in Christ, outside of Christ, in the flesh, no, you'll fall flat in your face. Every time, every time, amen. Trust in the Lord, <laughs> amen. Trust in the Lord, amen. That's what the Lord wants you to do. Trust in him tonight. So let's go to that 1 Corinthians 3 passage. You're probably there waiting for me. When is he going to get to that message there? Amen. Here's the only foundation. Are you ready? Verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, did you get that? This is exclusive. God says, what are you building your home on? What are you building your marriage on? What are you building your, your, how you're raising your kids on? What are you building your life upon? Amen. He says this, there's no other foundation. It's, it's the only one you ought to be building on is Jesus Christ. You know, people are building. They're all building. Everybody's building something. But where's, how's your foundation? Amen. How's your foundation? You got a good foundation? Amen. Or, 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 how's the foundation? Is it Christ? Is it Christ? What are you building on? Amen? You remember that passage over there in, uh, where is it there? In uh, Matthew chapter, you know, sometimes again, in the notes, not in the notes. Amen? Praise the Lord. And uh, Matthew chapter 7, look at this. The Bible says, verse 24, there's two foundations. Amen? Amen. There's two foundations. What foundation is yours? Okay? Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine. So again, the basis is what? The sayings of Christ. What's that? The word of God. It's not popular psychology, sociology. Listen, if psychology and sociology matches the Bible, I'm good with that. But if it disagrees with what the Bible says, chuck it out. Chuck it out. Amen? The Bible comes first. Amen? The word of God comes first. That's in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. You want to build your house? How are you building your house tonight? How are you building it? Is it upon the rock? If it's upon the precepts of the word of God, he says, if you, listen, you hear the sayings and you do them. Amen. Amen. Boy, I tell you, you know what? It seems like the, the simplest things in the Christian life are the, the ones that are most often disobeyed. Oh, I heard that. I know the truth, Pastor. I know that. Oh, you've taught that before. Answer this one question. Are you applying those truths in your home, family, in your marriage, in your relationships? Are you doing that? He says, wait a minute. If you hear them, the sayings of Christ, and you do them, are you doing them? Amen. Amen. Husbands, are you doing the sayings of Christ? Hey, ladies, are you doing the sayings of Christ? Hey, parents, are you doing the sayings of Christ? Hey, children, are you doing the sayings of Christ tonight? Um, are you obeying your parents, as the Bible says? Are you honoring them? Are you disrespecting them? Are you doing the sayings of Christ? Amen. He says, if you are, if you hear the sayings, and, you know, I don't think there's too much of a problem with hearing. Amen. I think most people know, you know, they can... They can, you know, get that part, but the problem is we're not doing them. So as a result, we're building on a faulty foundation, on a faulty ground, faulty situation, amen? And he says is this, what? I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock. You know what? We, we, we do this with the kids, amen? We, we sing the songs, the wise man built his house upon the rock, amen? And then we talk about the, the foolish man built his house upon the sand. And we say, boy, that, we love that song. And the kids are having a good time singing, all wonderful. But you know what? Have you ever thought about that as an adult, as you sing along with your kids? Have you thought about that? Or, 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 listen, do you really mean that? The kids get excited. Do they actually see mom and dad building the home on the rock, on the foundation of Jesus Christ, on the word of God? Amen. You hear the sayings, but are you doing them? 
How many messages do you need to hear before you do them? How many, how many challenges? You know what? Listen, I talked about the storms. We all face the storms. We mentioned that this morning, but let me help you out a little bit. Hebrews chapter 12, in that chapter, it talks about chastisement. If you're a child of God by faith in Jesus Christ tonight, he will also discipline you. And sometimes he'll allow some things to come in your life. As I mentioned before, when we did our be of good cheer messages, some storms are storms of correction and some storms are storms of perfection. They're either correcting you, the storm, because you're not right with God, or they're perfecting you, helping you to grow closer to the Lord and growing in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Which one is it tonight? What, what is it? You know your heart. Did you, did you, did you mean that? Did you, did you read the passage that I read in Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24? Did, did you ask God... You know, as we pray to open our hearts and open our thoughts, hey, Lord God, show me if there be any wicked way in me. Amen? Do, do you really mean that? Or it was just, oh, here's another message, you know. I, I feel, you know, my conscience is, is salved tonight because, you know, I, I heard the preaching online, and that, that's good, now we've got to get ready for work tomorrow morning. Let's start the cycle all over again and all that. Hey, wait a minute. Are, are you satisfied going another week, not living right, not, not being in the right place with God? Can you grow in any, any area of your life? Can you get closer to God than where you are tonight? What is it for you? What is it for you? What is it for me? Amen. What are the things that keep you from growing in the knowledge and grace of God tonight? What are those things? What are those things that are taking place? Hey, listen, how much time have you spent in the Word of God this week? There's a direct correlation between your growth and the Word of God. 1 Peter 2, 2 says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word that ye may grow thereby. You say, I'm not growing too much. Are you reading? I don't understand all. Keep on reading. I don't understand it. That's all right. Just still read it. You'll start to understand. Amen. You'll start to understand. Over time, you listen to preaching and teaching. You know, I, I really do. And I, I think, you know, uh, there, there is so much. You know, before, I, all I did was audio recordings, and I'd share it with people here and there. Now with YouTube, you got audio visual. You can go back. I got all these playlists in the, in the, in the, on the church YouTube site. So I, I got nothing else to do. You know, I'm bored. I'm bored. <laughs> How about watch a message? Maybe God wants to prick your heart and get you worked up a little bit so that you can get some things taken care of and do some, some cleaning up in your life. Amen? Do some. You know, we talk about cleaning the house, and that's not wrong. We clean up the yard. Amen? Clean up the winter mess. Amen? Rake the lawn. All those things. That's fine. Not wrong. None of that's wrong. But how about your personal life? Are you where, where God wants you to be? And then he talks about verse 25. And the rain descended. Floods came. The winds blew and beat upon that house. Then it fell not. It was founded upon a rock. Amen. Listen. Is, is your, listen. It, it's founded upon a rock. It's a solid. It's a firm foundation. We sang that song. Amen. We have an anchor this morning. Hebrews 6, 19, that anchor, that, that solid rock, Jesus Christ, amen, it's sure and steadfast, no matter what the storms are going on in your life, amen, it's sure, it's sure, and the Bible says, verse 26, and every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, now these are Jesus' words, he said, well, this is not very nice, he says, you're foolish, if you don't do them, you're foolish, that's what Jesus said, just think of that. Let it sink in for a few moments. He says, if you hear them and you do them, I can liken you unto a wise man, a wise person tonight. But if you hear them and don't do them, he likens you as a fool. You know what the Bible says? That's pretty humbling. I think it's, uh, I'm trying to remember all these passages, Psalm chapter 14, verse 1, and Psalm 53, verse 1 says this, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Your God says, listen, that's where I bring, that's the level of foolishness right there. A fool, he says, there's no God. Man, I'll tell you, that's, 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 that's humbling. You say, well, I, you know, I, I, I know the truth, but listen, are you obeying the truth? Are you living it, Amen. And he says, when that man, he built his house upon the sand, and the rains descended, and floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and the great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. He said, wow. In other words, I never heard that before. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. 
For he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. Go to the comparative passage in Luke 6, 47. Luke 6, 47. Luke chapter 6, verse 47. But the Bible says, and this one, I, I tell you, I, I like both passages, but I like looking at these, these passages, you know, the harmony of the Gospels, comparative passages, and Luke has a comparative passage to the one we just read in Matthew. Look at this. Wow. Boy, this is amazing. He's whosoever cometh to me, gives us a little bit more information, and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show to you to whom he is like. Watch this. He is like a man which built an house and dig deep. Now, you know, as you go further north, you know, people in the States, you live in Florida. Man, I'll tell you, I heard stories. I don't know. I've never done it because I've, ne I've been to Florida years ago when I was a kid. Um, but uh, I heard that you don't have to dig very far before you start seeing water seeping up. They don't, I don't think they have too many places with basements, if any, down there in Florida. Amen. A lot of it is swampland. Amen. You ever hear of the Everglades? Amen. So anyway, you got, you know, so they just put, what, concrete pads and they build them up or whatever. So he says, you know what? To get a good foundation, you got to dig deep. So up here in Canada, and we're just in Nova Scotia, we're not even the far north. Some people think as soon as you cross the border, wow, you're way up there. There should be snow as soon as we cross the border. I, my, my pastor from years ago in Niagara Falls, he worked at the border at Sault Ste. Marie. There's Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, and Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. He said there would be people crossing the border in July with skis on the roof of their car, and they thought as soon as you cross the border, there's snow just across the border. Wow. No, no, no. Uh, wintertime snow, yes, yes. Not in the middle of summer. But anyway, we know this, that things get cold. you got to get that foundation down below the frost line. Otherwise, things are going to be shifting. Man, I'll tell you, the first year I lived, I lived in Digby, and we lived on Lighthouse Road. And uh, as we were living there, I noticed as the winter came through, we came there on September 1st of 1994. And when that, that first winter that we went through, by the time spring, it was getting, you know, the end of the winter and March and, and all that, I noticed, and I noticed this over time, the, the lawn was fairly smooth when I got there. By the time it was done, we had so many freeze-thaw cycles, the ground had heaved all over the place. There was like lumps all over the lawn because of the frost and heaving. You know what you got to do? You got to go below the frost line. He says you got to dig deep. Amen. <laughs> got to get down. Amen. You want a firm footing. You want a firm foundation. Amen. You want it on the rock, on the rock, on the rock. You know, I, I, I like looking at history. And uh, I was thinking about the Brooklyn Bridge. And I know my son-in-law, Scott, has got a, what a beautiful picture of the Brooklyn Bridge. I tell you, what an amazing story. I don't know if they still have that. They used to have it on Netflix. They talked about some of these amazing marvels of engineering. And I, I watched that whole thing. And they talked about how that on one side they hit bedrock. you got to hit bedrock. Amen. That bridge was made in 1880 or 1890, something in there. Just imagine this. That bridge is over 100 years old, the brook, and it's still standing. So on one side, they hit bedrock. On the other side, they, they hit, they, they were going down, and, and unfortunately, back then, they were learning some things about the bends. You know, we have one of these chambers here at the VG. I think they still have them there. You know, these decompression chambers and stuff for the divers. And these guys who are working down, they, they use these special things that they were going down uh, in the ground to dig and then... They were pumping air. They even had that somewhat of a technology and pumping air down in these things. And uh, what happened was some of the guys were getting sick and some even died. And they had, they had not hit bedrock on one side of the Brooklyn Bridge. And what happened was they found compressed sand. So the engineering people had to make some important decisions. Are we going to keep on going? How are we going to do this? We have to lessen the time of these workers. Some are getting sick. Some have died. What are we going to do? We've got to make a decision. And they finally made a decision. They said, well, we'll put the foundation right on that compressed sand. And I thought, wow, that was a hard decision to make. The book bridge is still standing. How about that? <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Amen. But you know what? You want to hit the rock. Amen. That's what you really want. You don't want compressed sand. You don't want anything close. You just want rock, solid rock. Dig down deep, amen? You know what? The Lord, when you got saved, he dug deep. He dug really deep in your life, amen? 
Boy, I tell you, hey, if you got you saved, praise the Lord, amen? So what happened here? He says the man, in verse 48, he's like a man which built his house, dig deep, laid the foundation on a rock. When the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the house. And I love this phrase. I love this phrase. And could not shake it. I think I've seen too many Christians shaking here in the last year. I'm not saying it's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not something that... How can I say it hasn't startled us, amen? I've never thought we'd be going through anything like this. But he says, it could not shake it, for it's founded upon a rock. Are you shaking tonight? That's, you say, well, you read the math, you didn't say anything about shaking. Oh, I tell you, that first year we lived, we moved from uh, Digby, we lived there from September, and let's see here, of 94 and 95, we moved down the French shore, we moved down to Grosscock, uh, it means large clam in French. And, you know, we used to see the people clamming. I talked about that this afternoon. The clamming, amen. And uh, so anyway, with the clam hacks, <laughs> as the tide goes out, they're clamming. As the tide comes back in, they're clamming, amen. They're taking advantage of the full tide, in and out. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I, I remember when we first got there, the first night, it seemed, I, man, I tell you, I've never lived in an old farmhouse. The thing was old. It was it was. I found a deed, 1872, so it was older than that. It was bought, it was sold and bought in 1872. My, it was old, it was old. <clears throat> French Acadian house, wow, what a place, amen. And uh, so anyway, you know, I, I'm, I'm a pretty sound sleeper. I, I have been for years. Up, as you get older, you're not as a sound sleeper anymore. You wake up in the middle of the night. But I used to sleep right through, no problem at all. And uh, so anyway, and uh, there were times... The kids would tell me, they'd, they'd sleep upstairs. We had five bedrooms in that farmhouse and a nice a pantry, big kitchen, amen, a couple of acres of land, big barn in the back. I had a wood, a wood shop in the back, you know. So anyway, downstairs, my, my wife and I'd sleep in this, like a master bedroom, but the kids, they all had their bedrooms upstairs. And uh, my daughter, oldest daughter, was with us back then. And anyway, as time went on, when we had these wind storms, oh, 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 I didn't realize. I never lived on the ocean before, but boy, I tell you, when they come, what would they do? You know what they would do to that old house? They'd shake it. They'd, they'd tell me, hey, Dad, did you feel the house shake last night? Of course I don't feel that shake. Even if I was sleeping upstairs, I couldn't feel it shake because I sleep soundly back then. Amen. But they say, Dad, Dad, the house shakes and the wind and the storm. You know what? The Lord says this, if you get saved. And you, 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 you hear the words of Christ. You hear the word of God. And you apply them in your life. He says, your life will not shake. Your life will not be shaken tonight. That's the kind of life I want. I don't want to be shaken by everything on the internet and on social media and news media. Amen? I don't ignore things that are going on, but make sure you got the truth. How about that? If you can just find the truth. Amen? Out there in the world, I know about the truth in the Bible. I got that. That's no problem. But get the truth on the news media and social media. Are you shaken by some of that stuff? Man, some people, they're, they're, they're just falling apart. Why? Because they're filling their head with all that stuff. Hey, listen tonight. He says there, when the floods came for that house that was built upon rock, amen, they dug down deep, laid that foundation. That's your salvation in Christ. The stream beat vehemently upon that house. Verse 48 and could not shake it, for it was founded upon the rock. Amen. Couldn't shake it. That's what he said. Cannot. Amen. The problem is, if you're shaken, there's something you're not doing. Verse 49, but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man without a foundation, built a house upon the earth against the stream, uh, which the stream did beat him, and immediately it fell. <laughs> fell apart. Amen. Listen, no person in their right mind would do that. Now, you know what? I, I understand there's some people in certain countries and in the world, they, you know, their, their infrastructure's not very good. And, you know, when they got typhoons out there in, in the Pacific, amen, typhoons and hurricanes down in those Caribbean islands, amen, I know, I, I'm not making light of this, amen. They don't have foundations, some of them, and bang, <laughs> They're gone. They disappear. They're gone. Amen. Remember that tsunami that was down there in, in, uh, in uh, I think it was, was it uh, down in uh, Indonesia or something near over there or something? I can't remember. But down in, down in that area in the Pacific, off there somewhere. Amen. Boy, did, I remember watching that part of the news, what people had. And I, my, my heart was breaking, these people. 
Amen. Not good. Not good. Amen. But here, listen, God says, set up yourself in a foundation, dig deep. Amen. That's when you got saved. You got that. Are you, come on, you're going to build upon that now? If you hear it and you obey it, you're strengthening. Amen. You're strengthening your fellowship and your relationship with God. Amen. And if you hear the word, you hear the truth, and you're not obeying it, you're weak. Amen. You're weak. You're not strong. As I preached last night, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That's what God wants you to do. Be strong in the Lord. Amen. So I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what problem you're facing. I don't know what challenge. And by the way, I have not been through a lot of the challenges that some people have been, but I've been through some challenges that maybe you haven't been through, but we're not going to compare that. Let me just tell you this. The book's the same for everybody. I don't care who you are. The Bible is the same. The principles are the same. You just got to live by Bible principles. And if your marriage, listen, listen, if mom and dad are living by biblical principles, there'll be a strong marriage. Amen? Nothing's going to shake that marriage tonight. Listen, if mom and dad are raising the kids according to the Bible, they're going to have a strong relationship there. Amen? Praise God to raise those children's right for God. And if you reinforce those truths in your kids' lives and make them responsible and make them accountable, amen, to you, number one, and to God, listen, that won't shake them, amen, it won't shake them, but you got to obey God, not just here, well, we know the Bible, that's good, I'm, I'm glad you know it, but you're halfway there, you're going to fall, it's going to shake you, you're going to crumble, you're going to fall down, amen, you better apply these principles, we're talking about the home and the family as these weeks ahead, and talk about mothers, amen, we need to apply those. We need to do that. So listen, let's get back. Let's see. So the foundation, the base of the home is obvious. It's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. He's our foundation tonight. He's the foundation for life. Amen. He's our foundation tonight. So, so you need to be saved. You need to be saved. You know, and, and this what this really what really bothers me is to see. A couple who's lost in marriage have a better relationship to some Christian couples. I'm telling you, that's shame on God's people. As Paul said in his letters, I speak this to your shame. <laughs> that's what he said there. Somewhere, I think it's the Corinthian epistle, I think. I speak this to your shame. Amen. I know it was about getting the gospel out, but hey, I could, we could say the same thing. I speak this to your shame. If, listen, if a lost husband and wife can have a better relationship than some Christian couples, there's something wrong. Something's not right there. You're not applying the biblical principles. Amen? You know, I believe a man who's lost can love his wife as Christ loved the church. I believe that. And not even know Christ. Amen? I know that. And I know a woman could submit and respect and honor her husband even though she might not even be a Christian. I know that could be possible. Amen. But the problem is when you have Christian homes where that's not taking place, it really hurts the cause of Christ. And it's hurting you. It's hurting you as a couple. And it's also hurting your kids because they ought to see that beautiful picture of the bride and bridegroom. Amen. The church is the bride of Christ. Christ is the bridegroom. They ought to see that beautiful picture that, you know, the husband loves as Christ loves us. Amen. And we are in submission to Jesus Christ, the bride of Christ, as we ought to be. And the wife ought to be that same way to her husband. It ought to be like that. It ought to be like that. Amen. Should be, should be, amen? See, the foundation and the basis for the home is the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the word of God. See, he's the living word. The Bible says in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, capital G-O-D, amen? Amen, the Jehovah Witness, they don't believe that God is, Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. They put a little G there, little God, amen? He is a God. No, no, he is God, he is God. The word was God. Amen. Thank God for that. So he's the living word and the written word. Amen. We got the written word. We got Jesus Christ. He's in you. Amen. We're in him. That's the reciprocal and dwelling. He's the hope of glory. He's our hope tonight. Amen. We got everything we need. I, I know I repeat that. We got everything we need to have the right kind of marriage that pertains to life and godliness. What, what is it about life that you're saying we don't have? Amen. You know what the problem is? People won't obey God. 
That's what it is. We know the truth, but it won't, can't do anything for us if we don't apply it. We want to have a good marriage, but both husband and wife got to work together and bring that thing together, and the kids need to respect and honor and obey mom and dad. Amen? And parents got to learn how to properly discipline and, and correct their kids and teach them and train them. That's what the Bible says. See, the basis, the basis for the home, for the family, for gender identity, amen, for the definition of marriage. You know what it is? The Bible. God says there's male and female. That's the Bible. You say, well, you know, the government says, and the universities are teaching the young people that are going through universities about DNA and all this kind of stuff that they're not necessarily who they think they are, you know, and they're starting to, to, to touch the minds, these young kids in the elementary grades and try to put those thoughts in there, amen? Hey, listen, what's worked for the last 6,000 years still works. Amen. You want to keep a society together? Stick with the Bible. You want to see it crumble before your face? Hey, listen, turn the Bible away. Get rid of the Bible, and you'll see what happened. We have seen that. Amen. And what we're seeing tonight in, in our country, in our land, set aside coronavirus, set aside the pandemic. I'm talking about pre pandemic. We have been watching our country fall to pieces because people have forsaken the Word of God, the Bible tonight. They've forsaken the truth. Amen? And we're falling apart just like the Roman Empire did. And we're going down the same path, as I've said so many times, that even Edward Gibbons came to those conclusions for the causes and the reasons why it fell to pieces. And you know what? A lot of what he said are biblical reasons. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's amazing. The basis for all of these things, the home, the family, the marriage, gender identity, definition of marriage, is not the school system. It's not the politicians. It's not the courts. It's not the media, whether it be social or news media. It's not Hollywood. It's not the entertainment industry. Who, what is it? It's the Bible. It's God. God defines it. The principles are biblical. Amen? They're not according to the way the world. The world changes. It's up and down. It's, man, I'll tell you, they're so confused. Amen? When you disregard God in the Bible, society is without an absolute standard of morality tonight. I preached messages months ago about absolute mor morality, amen? I preached against moral relativism. That's the way the world's up. Well, you know, it was wrong. It was wrong, supposedly, 20 years ago. But you know what? It's okay now to do this. And what they're talking about is something clearly stated in the Scriptures that's, that's wrong. It's evil. It's wicked. It's not according to the Bible. Amen? They're saying, oh, it's okay now. Why? Because the school says so. Why? Because the government says so. Amen? That's how people are operating. A lot of people, the government has replaced God. It's replaced God. Oh, the government says we can do it, preacher. Well, what about God? Amen. He's, he's the higher power. Amen. It's him, God. He's, he's the one who set everything in motion here. What about, what does God say about it? Amen. Bible says in Acts 5, 29, we ought to obey God rather than man. Amen. Listen, I'm not saying the government's wrong on every issue, but I'll tell you one thing. There are a lot of changes going on right now. As a matter of fact, there may be changes for us not even be able to do stuff like this tonight. May be coming down in years to come if the Lord tarries. Amen. I don't know how long this thing's going to go on for. But I know this. You disregard the Bible and societies without an absolute standard of morality. What's right and what's wrong? Let me ask you this question. Outside of the government, who says murder is wrong? Set aside, if you don't have a Bible, you don't believe in the Bible, and the government, let's say the gov you, you don't have the government, who says murder is wrong? You know what it is? It becomes your opinion. I believe murder's wrong. First degree murder's wrong. The Bible says it's wrong. It's always been wrong. God hasn't changed on that. Some people, they, they think, you know, you say, well, I don't think murder, first degree murder's okay. Okay. But you know what? We, we, we talk about that, but we, but we fail to realize this. How about this? God ordained that in marriage, it's a man and a woman. That's what God said. The world says, no, it doesn't have to be. Oh, you say you hate people that are, don't agree with what? No, I don't. I want to reach them with the gospel. They need Jesus Christ. They need to be saved. Amen? I, I believe that. Amen? we got to set aside that to reach them. Amen? That's what Jesus did. Amen? Remember we were talking about um, good old Zacchaeus? Amen? He came down. We talked about that Wednesday night. You know, they said, hey, Jesus is sitting with sinners there. You know what? People, listen. You know what? 
I have hope that some people are going to get saved. How many? I don't know. That's why, listen, I have hope that people will listen to this message, they'll either get saved or Christians will get their heart right and make some changes. I don't believe I'm wasting my breath and wasting my energy and my life doing this. I don't. I believe there's hope. I have hope. If I didn't have hope, I'd shut the thing down. I'd say, go call another pastor. I'm resigning as pastor. I'd say, I give up on this stuff. But I have hope. Amen? I have hope. The longer I'm in it, the more zealous I become, and the more earnest I become, and I see the need and a greater need. Listen, the closer you get to God, the more you see things the way God sees them. Problem is we've lost our, our spiritual eyesight, so to speak. Amen? So what happens? Our society, morality changes. All these changes have been taking place. I know we've got to wrap up shortly. The Bible tells us in Psalm 11:3, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Amen. We're seeing it crumble. We're seeing it crumble. Man, I'll tell you, listen, my wife told me, you know, I've never, how can I say it? When I was a kid, I went, I was brought up and raised a Catholic, and I was taught some morality. The only problem is they didn't teach salvation by grace and faith uh, alone. They taught works and faith together. But anyway, so I was taught some morality back, back in the 50s and 60s when I was a little kid there. But you know what? My wife, when she went to school back in Niagara Falls, she told me this. She says, when we were kids in the public school, not in a Catholic school, not in a quote-unquote Christian school, but in the government public school in, in Ontario, in Niagara Falls, they would sing Sunday school songs. They would say the Lord's Prayer. Amen? I mean, listen, they, this is things that they would do in the public system. Boy, I dare say any of that happens in the public system anymore. Man, we've moved so far from that. Boy, I tell you, we've changed. We've come a long way. We've come a long way. You know, we've reached the time. Amen. Similar to the time that during the time of prophet Isaiah when he was preaching to God's people, the nation of Israel. Let's look at this verse, and you know what? I, we just, we got to kind of shut it down somewhere for now, and then we'll pick it up. Amen. <clears throat> Isaiah 520. Lock this verse away. Amen. Mark it down. Circle it. Don't be afraid to write in your Bible. Amen. I got all kinds of markings and writings and notes in my Bible helps me. I read this, and you know, I, 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 I might not <clears throat> sometimes remember the exact reference, and I apologize if I misled you on some references, you know, over the years and stuff, but I'll tell you something. I, for the most part, I know where to look in this Bible. I say, well, yeah, it's in the top right of, of this part of the Bible, and you know, and I, I, I just got it visually in here, and I say, well, yeah, I know where that is. It's up in this section on this column. So you got four columns, two on each page, and I think, oh, yeah, it's up there. It's down here. It's in the middle or whatever. Okay, but anyway, Isaiah chapter 5, do you see that? Do you see that passage? You say, well, that's what's going on with the nation. These were God's chosen special people. They had the law. They had the law. They knew what the law said. They knew what God said. Listen, in, in Exodus 20, they heard God speak. You know, somebody, some got this idea that, you know what, they, they got the commandments and, and then you know, then as a result of that, then they found out, no, no, God spoke to all of them while they were on, they were down around the mountain. God spoke audibly in Exodus 20. You got to read that. He's speaking to the commands. They all heard it. They all heard it. They were shaking. The Bible says there's smoke and thunders and lightnings on the mount. Amen. They were afraid. Amen. That's God. Amen. And they heard God's word. They heard the Ten Commandments. And of course, Moses, you know, of course, God gave them um, the, the law, amen? And they had, you know, you got Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy and those books there. So what happened was they had all of this. And you say, well, you know, we look at the nation of Israel. Boy, you know, we're, you know, we're not that far gone or something. You know, it's amazing how far people can go sometimes. You say, how did that happen? Little by little, a little here, a little there. Amen? It's just like if you haven't seen certain kids, you know, and you haven't seen them for, let's say, 10 years, you say, I don't even recognize that kid. Why? Because you weren't there. Because see, a little bit at a time, you get used to that. But if you remove yourself from somebody, you say, I don't even recognize. Who are you? I had someone come to me in the church in the valley there. At first, I didn't recognize one of them. And I, I, I thought, you know, uh, uh, I'm trying to think, oh, this is so-and-so. I said, 
oh, there, okay, yeah, I remember you now. Because it's been since 1998. <laughs> I haven't seen that. All those years, we're all getting a little older. Amen. <laughs> you probably wouldn't recognize me if you don't see me very often. See, when you are not around something that changes little uh, by day by day, amen, people from outside say, wow, you've changed a lot. Really? Be honest. Amen. Well, you, you know, maybe they wouldn't say that to you because, you, you know, they want to hurt you. Well, you, you're, you're changed. You know, I hope it's for the better. <laughs> amen. I hope it's not for the worse. But you and I, seeing our kids, you know, we've got to be careful, amen, raising our marriages, or we let things go little by little. Next thing you know it, wait a minute, how do we get from over here to there? This is where we started, and we let this go, and we let that go, and we let this go, and we let that go. That's what happened to the nation of Israel. It was little changes here and there. You know, we think, oh, that's not a bad sin. You know, we'll let that one go. But this one, oh, we really got to punish them for that one. You got it all wrong. Listen, I believe there's different degrees of punishment, but you need to correct no matter what it is. If it's according to the Bible and they've disobeyed the word of God, you need to correct that. There may be a degree of punishment. It may be a greater degree for certain things, but the reality is there needs to be correction. But we get used to it. We get lazy. We get used to the remote, sitting on watching something. We don't want to get up. We don't want to take care of it, amen? Or we're glued to our tablets, our phones, and all that. We just sit there, and we're letting things fall to pieces. Really? Is that what you want? I hope that's not going on in your home, in your family. So what happened here? The Bible says they got to a point. The prophet Isaiah, this is shocking. But you know what? We are living in the same time. Look at this. Verse 20, he says here, Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, and put darkness for light. Listen, darkness and light are contrary. You read over there, you know, when he talks about not being unequally yoked, amen? He talks about that in 2 Corinthians. And, and he says, listen, they call, what do they do? They call evil good, and good evil. Man, they got their, their moral compass all messed up, amen? They can't even tell where North Pole is anymore, they're so messed up spiritually, they're calling good evil and evil good. And they put darkness for light and light for darkness. They put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You know what happened? They're blurred in moral uh, issues, and they're excusing sin. They're excusing sin. I've seen that in Christian circles. Well, that's not wrong. They'll say this, show me in the Bible. Amen? And, you know, I, I'll, if, if it's not a thus saith the Lord passage, I'll say, here's a principle to live by. You know, you know, you know what I found? Sometimes I, I, I think Christians are the same way that the, our, our, our chief medical officer said the other day. I heard him say this. He says, don't look for loopholes. I think we got too many Christians looking for loopholes. They're trying to get out of obeying God and the word of God. Well, I've got a loophole here. Some people say, you know, what's wrong with drinking? I said, tell me this. I got pass I can show you. And if it's clearly stated, I go by what God said clearly to interpret the rest of the Bible. But let me ask you this question. What's good about it? Tell me all the positive effects of social drinking. Give me a list. I'll come back with another list for you. Give me a list of all the positive effects of social drinking. Man, I'll tell you, that's where we're at tonight. Even you got, you got I have to argue with Christians. Isn't that sad? I'd expect that from lost people. When you have, you're challenged by Christians, what's wrong with that? And what's wrong with that? That's where we're at. You know where you're at? You're exactly where the nation of Israel was back in 760 B.C. And nothing's changed. And what's happened is you haven't learned from history because you don't read the Bible like you should. That's the real problem. People just don't know the truth. They don't study the Bible. So they don't learn from history. They're doomed to repeat history. Man, I'll tell you. He says what there in verse 20? Woe unto them. That's not good. That's not good at all. There's a whole bunch of woes in here. I wouldn't go through all of those. I think there's at least six of them. <laughs> Amen. There's woe, verse 8. Woe, verse 11. Woe, verse 18. Woe, verse 20. That's the one we just read. Woe, verse 21. Woe, verse 22. Yeah. He said, woe unto you. Even Jesus has some woes. You read those, I think, in Matthew 23. Whoa, whoa unto you. That's not a good thing when the Lord has to say that to you through the prophet or through Jesus Christ. Amen. 
And like I've already said, what men learn from history is they just never learn from history. Hey, listen, tonight, I know, there's your introduction. How about that? Foundation. Where's your, how's your foundation? Amen? You got a good foundation if you hear and obey. You're on, you're on sinking sand. Man, I'll tell you, the storms of life will come, will shake you to pieces, and the lost world will say, you know what? Why do I need this God that you talk about? Man, you're falling to pieces like I am. So much for your God, so much for this Bible thing that you got. What a sad testimony. We want to win the world to Christ, but our homes and families are falling apart. How are we going to win the world if they can't see some of the evidence of our Christianity in our homes and families and the marriages and how we treat each other? Sad. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. It's terrible. It's not good. It's not good at all. Amen. We need to have a good testimony. Amen. Man, I'll tell you. Anyway, we got to stop there. Lord willing, we'll pick it up. And... Uh, Lord willing, next Sunday. Amen? Let's pray. Father, again, thank you for your word. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the truth. Thank you, Lord God, that we still have a standard of morality that's based upon your word. Help us to obey. Help us not to just believe it and hear it, but also, Lord God, to do it, to obey, to apply it in our lives tonight. Oh, God, do a great work. I pray even as J. Edwin Orr wrote, Lord God, cleanse me, oh God. <laughs> we, we, want, we want to have a revival. How about some revivals in the home? We want it in the church, but we won't have it in the church unless we start it with every individual in the church and every family, amen? Oh God, you can do that. I know you can. We know your hand's not shortened in revival. The problem is us. We're getting in the way of revival. Where our hearts are not tender to the things that you want us to do. Oh God, help us tonight. We pray for those who may be lost watching this tonight. I know some of the things I've said tonight may not may surprise some people that don't know you, Lord, but help them to realize what I spoke is from the Bible. It's true. Oh, God, open their eyes, open their heart. God, help them to see, Lord God, their need of salvation tonight. Oh, God, we want your will and way to be accomplished in each and every life. Now, God, again, just bless till we meet next time here online. And Lord willing, hopefully, Lord God, we'll see some of these restrictions lifted here. Maybe, Lord God, in the next week or so, so we can get some folks in the building. God, again, just bless and work. And we'll give you all the honor and glory, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all.